Section 2.3, Volumes of Revolution, Cylindrical Shells. Now, this is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2, Chapter 2, Section 3. At the bottom of every page, you can see a link to where you can actually get the text for free, so make sure you do that, and that way you do have something to look at. All right, so we are revolving this solid. Okay, we have this region right here, okay, bound between A and B of the function f of x, and we are revolving it around the y-axis in this case. So we are revolving it this way. So the solid we're actually forming looks something like this. Now the big difference is that we are revolving around the y-axis, not the x-axis like previously with the disk and the washer method. So we have a slightly different approach. So to begin with, our representative rectangle looks like this. Okay. Again, from that region R, we have this representative rectangle. Now what we are doing if we're going around the y-axis is we are taking this and we are swinging it all the way around. So what, we, what actually happens is you form a, a cylinder. All right, so this actually gives us a shell of a cylinder. Okay, so here's what that would look like. If we take that piece we had, that representative rectangle, and we wrap it around the y-axis, it forms this shell of a cylinder. Now, if we flatten that out, if we cut it and we flatten it out, we get something that looks like this, okay, which is a rectangular prism. Now, the delta x is the thickness of that slice. 2 pi x, that is because this is a circle, it's a cylinder, and our height of that prism there is the height of the function. It's given by exactly that. So that means that the volume of that shell is going to be approximately f of xi, okay, the height, times the length, 2 pi xi, and delta x as our thickness there. Now, if we were to sum all those shells up, okay, we get a Riemann sum from i to n of 2 pi xi, f of xi, delta x. So now, if we let n go to infinity, we want an infinite number of these thin rectangles, or these thin shells, then we get the volume is equal to the integral from a to b of 2 pi x, f of x, dx. Okay, so this leads us to our rule, the shell method. So to begin with, let f of x be continuous and non-negative. We define r as the region bounded above by the graph of f of x, below by the x-axis on the interval a to b. Then, the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving r about the y-axis, and again, big emphasis on the y-axis here, is given by that integral that we just developed. Integral from a to b of 2 pi x f of x dx. All right, so the first thing we really want to do on most of these is sketch them and make sure that it even fits into the idea of what we're going for. All right, so define r to be the region bounded above by the graph f of x equals 1 over x and below by the x-axis over the interval 1 to 3. All right, so let's start with that. So 1 over x is going to look something like that and below by the x-axis from 1 to Two, three. So our region is actually this right here. All right, and we are revolving around the y-axis, finding the volume of the solid revolution by revolving r around the y-axis. So that means we are going about that direction. So our representative rectangle is going to be something to that effect. Okay, so based on this setup, this actually does fit into our method of the shell method. So what we will do is to find that volume, this is the integral from a to b, so from 1 to 3, of 2 pi x okay, times f of x. Well, f of x is 1 over x. All right, so that would be the volume is the integral from 1 to 3 of 2 pi dx, and we can evaluate that, that is 2 pi x from 1 to 3, which is 6 pi minus 2 pi, so 4 pi units cubed. Okay, because this is volume, we have units cubed. 
there we have it. Now let's try number 19. And I've mentioned this before, but please make sure that as you're taking notes on these, that one, you're writing things down, you're pausing, go back as you need to. There's a strong correlation with videos of the students that back up and rewatch and pause things and actually are taking active notes generally are going to do better on these. They're gonna, you're going to understand what's going on. So just toss them out there. So number 19, define R as the region bounded above by the graph of f of x equals 2x minus x squared and below by the x-axis over the interval 0 to 2. Find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving R around the y-axis. Alright, so again, we want to sketch this. Alright, so first off, I note that there's an x-intercept at 0, and actually at 2 as well. So our graph looks something like this function, but we're only concerned with between 0 and 2. Now we're revolving this around the y-axis, which means our representative rectangle is going to look something like that. And we're going to, we're revolving that around. All right. Now, because this fits into the method of shells, we can go ahead and say the volume is equal to the integral from 0 to 2, 2 pi x. Now, f of x is 2x minus x squared dx. All right. Well, that would be the integral from 0 to 2 of, and I'm going to leave the 2 pi out here. In fact, I'm going to take it out, factor that out of the integral, and that is going to be 2x squared minus x cubed dx, so 2 pi, and that will be x cubed, so 2 thirds x cubed minus x to the fourth over 4 using our power rule, we don't need that anymore, evaluated from 0 to 2. Now I'll leave the calculation there to you, but this should come out to be 8 thirds pi units cubed. Be sure you're double checking that. Although I've worked these a couple times and verified my answers, it's never a bad idea to actually work out that out. That is one of those things from calculus 1 we need to make sure we know how to do. All right, so in general, the shell method is not going to be too crazy. This is how it works. You sketch it, make sure that it matches the setup we're going with, make sure our representative rectangle matches, and then work on the integral. Now, now we can also have the shell method revolving around the x-axis. The thing is, we have to make sure that we are parallel. So in this case, our rectangle is actually going to be a horizontal rectangle. So, let g of y be continuous and non-negative. Define q as the region bounded on the right by the graph of g of y, on the left by the y-axis. Okay, so imagine having something that looks like this. g of y, we have our y-axis, and we have a region that looks like this, and it's between c and d. And we are revolving around the x-axis. In that case, that volume is equal to the integral from c to d of 2 pi y, g of y, dy. So if our functions are already in terms of y, then this is the way to do it. It's the same idea, but we are going from the bottom to the top rather than left to right. If they're not, sometimes it actually is easier to convert them to terms of y. That just kind of depends on the, on the situation you have. So define q as the region bounded on the right by g of y equals 3 over y, and on the left by the y-axis over the interval from 1 to 3. Well, based on this description, it matches almost word for word our rule, the shell method with revolution about the x-axis. So I'm pretty sure it's going to fit, but I still want to go ahead and sketch this out. All right, so 3 over y actually looks like this. I'm kind of sketching it, but at 1 it is 3, and at 3 it's 1, and really that's at a y value of 
at a y value of 1, the x value, the output, is 3. At a y value of 3, the output is 1. Okay, so I have those points that line up. I am revolving this around the x-axis. So my representative rectangle looks like this. Okay, now again, this matches our setup. We're about the x-axis. So my volume is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to 3. 2 pi y, and then g of y, which is 3 over y, dy. So that would be the integral, and the 3 will go ahead and factor out the 2 pi, and that is going to be 3. So 2 pi, 3y, evaluated from 1 to 3, so that should be, so that'll be 9, so 18 pi, minus 6 pi. So that is 12 pi units cubed. Okay. Now, again, since this was in terms of y, that, this is just what made sense to do. All right. And generally, that will be the case, but that's not always the case. All right. So this one, we still have the same setup. Let define q is the region bounded on the right by the graph g of y equals 2 square root of y, and on the left by the y-axis over the interval 0 to 4. Find the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving q around the x-axis. Okay, so again, I'm going to plug some values in. If I plug in 0, I am at 0. If I plug in 4 as a y-value, 4 is a y value, I'm going to be at an x value of 4. And I believe it's going to look something like that. All right, so we are talking about the region from 0 to 4. Okay, and we're revolving around the x-axis. So my representative rectangle will be something like that. And my volume will be equal to the integral from 0 to 4. 2 pi y, 2 square root of y is as my g of y. Okay. And that would be 4 pi. Go ahead and factor that out. Okay, and that is y to the 3 over 2. So that would be y to the 5 over 2 divided by 5 over 2, so 2 fifths from 0 to 4. All right, and 0 is going to be 0, so 4, that's going to be 2, 32, 64, 256 over 5 pi units cubed. So that'll be the volume revolving that around. And let me just point this out. If I revolve this around, I'm just going to get a very interesting little shape. So that is the volume of that. And a little bit later, I will actually want to make sure and show you guys how to do this um, using co-calc which used to be called sage math, but a way to actually visualize what these look like so that as we're going through, we can sort of have a, an idea of what we're looking at. All right, next, example 22. Define R as the region bounded above by the graph of f of x equals x below by the x-axis over the interval 1 to 2. Find the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving R around the line x equals negative 1. Now, I added a little note here. Sketch the graph. Okay, we always want to do that. And see how shifting might adjust this. Because one big thing to note is we are revolving around, around the line x equals negative 1. That is not the same as revolving around the x-axis or the y-axis. Okay, so let's see if we can get some intuition here. So the line f of x equals x. Okay, we were revolving.
revolving around x equals negative 1. So we're actually revolving around that. All right, and the area between 1 to 2. All right, so what's happening is we're actually doing this. Okay, and we are cutting out the middle. Okay, we're cutting out the middle of this. Okay, now, aside from the little sketch of the inside portion of that that I drew in there, let me take that out. The thing to notice is, uh, the big thing that is, is that we have the, rev the revolution. The axis of revolution is shifted to the left one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to redraw this or restate this problem as if we're revolving around the y-axis. Okay, so let's make it the y-axis. Okay, if we were talking about the y-axis, well then our f of x in relation to this line right here, it's actually not f of x equals x. It's x minus 1. If you can kind of see that, it shifted down one in relation to that. Okay? That's really the big thing right there. Okay, we're revolving around the y-axis, and we're still, well, again, in relation to that point, this is actually, we're actually going from 2 to 3. Okay, but in this case, now because it's the y-axis, this can be written as from 2 to 3 of 2 pi x f of x dx. Okay, so that would factor the 2 pi out, x squared dx. And make sure you realize where these things are coming from, because the finding f of x equals x minus 1 and the endpoints being 2 and 3, probably the most important part of this problem. So we'll integrate that from 2 to 3. All right. Oh, I just left something out. That's fairly important. x minus 1. All right, so then this should have an x. Let's move that apart minus x, so we have minus x squared over 2. Okay, now evaluating that from 2 to 3, we should get 23 over 3 pi units cubed. Alright, next one that we've got here Define R as the region bounded above by the graph of f of x equals x squared and below by the x-axis over the interval 0 to 1. Find the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving R around the line x equals negative 2. Similar problem as before. We've got the function x squared from 0 to 1. but we are revolving around the line x equals negative 2. All right, so the couple of things we need to recognize. One, in relation to this graph, or this uh, axis of symmetry that we're drawing here, this axis of revolution, our function is actually this, equals x minus 2, squared about the y-axis and our interval is going to be 2 comma 3. So again we are shifting from this point right here we are over 2 and we are over 3. That's how I'm getting the, the from 2 to 3 and because my axis is shifted to the left 2 I am shifting everything because this is shifted to the left. I'm shifting my equation to the right to compensate for that. So my volume 
is going to be the integral from 2 to 3. 2 pi x, x minus 2 squared dx. Alright, so if I factor my 2 pi out, this is going to be x times x squared minus 4x dx. And at this point, it's some fundamental calculus 1 integration. So I'm going to leave that to you and will come out to be 11 pi over 6 units cubed. And again, double check me on these because an important part of this is actually working through and verifying things. So most of the time I'm going to do that. I'm going to skip over the calculus 1 part of this in favor of focusing on the, the newer information. All right, number 24. Define r as the region bounded above by the graph f of x equals the square root of x, and below by the function g of x equals 1 over x over the interval 0 to 2. Find the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving r around the y-axis. And I'm going to change one thing in this so that it actually matches what I intended. We are going to go on the interval 1 to 4. Okay, now let's sketch this right here. So the square root of x is going over this way, 1 over x is coming down this way from 1 to 4. Now at 1 is actually where they meet. 2, 4. Okay, so now we're revolving around the y-axis. Our region is this right here, and our representative rectangle will look like that. This fits the method of shells, so the volume is the integral from 1 to 4 of 2 pi x f of x. Okay, well, the f of x here, because we have these two functions, it is the square root of x minus 1 over x. Right. Okay, because we are bounded above, and I actually drew that my rectangle incorrectly. It is the area from 0 to 4. I want to make sure that made sense. The area from 0 to 4, but it's actually this is our region. So our volume, our representative rectangle is right here. That's why I'm subtracting those two, because I'm bounded above by the square root of x, but below by 1 over x. Okay, so it's the region between those two. It's kind of like in the area between curves, uh, section 2.1. Okay, so that would be, if I factor my 2 pi out as always, 1 to 4 of x 3 over 2 minus, minus 1, actually, dx. So that would be x to the 5 over 2 divided by 5 over 2 minus x. Don't forget our 2 pi. Evaluating from 1 to 4. And that will be 94 over 5 units cubed. Oh, something important there. 95, 94 over 5 pi units cubed. Always have that pi because we are creating these cylindrical shells. Okay, next thing we want to look at, I'm actually going to omit this one. Comparing the methods for finding volume of solid revolution about the x-axis. And so this chart compares the three of these side by side. The shell method is useful whenever we have either something in terms of y, okay, but, but revolving around the x-axis, or something that is in terms of x and we're revolving around the y-axis. It actually depends on the way that we're revolving, okay, because in this case the rectangle is parallel to the axis of revolution. 
That's the important thing. So we have the disk method, where we say pi function squared. We're making disks out of it. The washer method, where we take the two disks and we subtract one. That's when we have a cavity in the center. That's a big thing to note. But most of these things are fairly, fairly typical. Okay, but these are general things of what you might see. Now, these do apply whenever you are in terms of y or in x, but you must be wise into how you write your functions. Okay, so keep that in mind. But this is a good reference as far as the three methods go. All right, so the last thing that we're going to have in this section is actually to determine what the best method to find the volume of a solid revolution is for three things. Now, all we're going to do is sketch these. Okay, set them up. So we're not going to have to solve these. So we need to determine what the best method is to find the volume, and it says around the x-axis. Okay, and set up the integral to find the volume. Do not evaluate. All right, now, it says around the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this, and I want to make sure that it matches, okay, what my functions are. Region bounded by y equals x and 2 minus x. Okay. And it says, and the x-axis. So my region is this right here, wherever those two cross in there. All right, now, these actually cross at 0. The region is from 0, and I believe that one is at 2. Yes, it's 2 minus x, so at 2. All right, so we have two choices, actually, with this one. My representative rectangle, if I made a rectangle that looked like this, I'm revolving around the x-axis. That looks like it would just be the disk method. Now, it's the disk method with one stipulation, and that is it actually breaks up into two parts. It would be from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 of pi x squared, that's my upper function at this point right here, okay, minus, or actually it's plus because we're combining the two integrals from 2 to 3, no, from 1 to 2, of pi 2 minus x squared dx, and that would give me the total volume. Now, I can do that, or you can actually do this one with the shell method if you came up with a representative rectangle that goes that way. Okay, so you'd have to kind of rotate your paper and look at the functions, and it would be a slightly different function, but it would be the same concept. All right. The region bounded by the graphs, y equals 4x minus x squared, and the x-axis. All right, sketching that. 4x minus x squared. Well, 0 is going to be 0, 0. And looks like it's going to be at 4. Right, and it's a negative x squared, so it'll look like that. Now, I'm revolving around the x-axis still. So here's my region. And this one actually looks like it'd be best to be done with the disk method because my representative rectangle is going to be doing something like this. So this will be the integral from 0 to 4 of pi function 4x minus x squared squared dx. Alright, last, the region bounded by the graphs, y equals 2 minus x squared and y equals x squared. Alright, 2 minus x squared is going to right here, and x squared. Alright, the region bounded by those two. So we're looking at this right here. Again, revolving around the x-axis. Because we have one function on top of the other, this would actually be best done with the washer method. Alright, so this would be from... Hmm, where do they intersect? That's a good question. How about at 1? Yes, at 1 and at negative 1. So negative 1 to 1 of pi 
and we are going to have the upper function, that's the 2 minus x squared, squared, minus x squared. Now, this is the useful method here because there is, whenever we rinse this around, revolve it around, we're going to have a cavity. We're going to have a cavity right in here. So that is why we need the washer method there. All right, so keep these three methods as we've looked at them separately. Keep them straight, but please refer back to that last table um, to determine when the most useful one is going to be. That's it.